welcome to my channel or welcome back I am Amanda in today's video I am going to be showing how I made a miniature apothecary chest of drawers out of used packaging and junk mail I like to repurpose things to help reduce waste and to save money. I of course still have new products and materials that I use, but I also tend to hoard things that would otherwise go to a landfill because the environment is something that weighs heavy on my heart and if I get the random urge to make something, I like having things on hand that I can just grab and make stuff with and I don't have to leave the house or spend money. With that said, let's get to the tutorial. All right, so I will be using a random magazine that I got in the mail, some cardboard from a package I had, and these boxes. I start out by cutting some cardboard for the main structure. I will need a back, a top, a bottom, two sides, and two shelves. I will have all the measurements on the screen and also in the description box. I'm using an X-Acto knife to cut these out, but if you don't have one, you can always use scissors, of course, or if you have a box cutter, that would also work really well. After those are cut out, I label each piece so I have a visual that I have everything that I need. This is probably an unnecessary step as I end up covering these with a page from the magazine, but it helps my brain nonetheless. Next, I take a page from the magazine and I cut enough to cover each piece of the cardboard. Once again, the measurements will be on the screen and in the description box. I adhere the cardboard to the paper so it doesn't move around when I wrap them. I place the cardboard in the center and then I cut out the corners of the paper to create flaps so when I wrap it up, there is less bulk and it's a cleaner fold. To do this, I just line my X-Acto knife up with the corners of the cardboard and slice straight down. Once they're all cut out, it sort of looks like a lowercase t or a cross. After the corners are done, I cut each side of every flap at a slight angle, so when I wrap it, there is no extra hangover on the sides. I just eyeball it and make sure not to cut them at too much of an angle because I want to make sure that there is still enough to actually cover the cardboard. Less is best here. You can always cut more off, but you can't add it back. Wrapping the cardboard is optional. Painting the cardboard itself is definitely a time saver, but I wanted to cover up the corrugation that you see along the edge of the cardboard. After my flaps are completely done, I of course fold them over, almost like an envelope. I start off with the small flaps on the inside and then the larger flaps on the outside for a cleaner look. I make sure to pull the flaps taut so the edges are a little more sharp, but I make sure not to pull too hard so I don't rip the paper. Pretty much any type of adhesive would work here, but using a liquid glue can warp the paper if you use too much, so I chose to use my tape runner and then I switched over to double-sided tape. After those are all finished, I take some inexpensive acrylic black paint and paint each piece. Wrapping these in black cardstock would have been a big time saver as well, but obviously I am choosing to upcycle the magazine. While those are drying, I move on to the drawers, which I had a lot of fun making. They're actually pretty easy. I'm sure there is an even easier way out there to do it, but this is just what I came up with. I'm choosing to use the packaging from the Power Crunch bars because it's thinner than cardboard, but heavier duty than just paper. Something like a cereal box or a cracker box would also work really well. I'm doing six drawers, so of course I cut out six pieces for the outside of the drawer and then six smaller pieces for the insert. Once they're all cut out, I score the outside of the drawers at three quarters of an inch, one and one eighth inch, one and seven eighths inch, and two and a quarter inch. I make sure to score them with the side I want on the inside facing up for a cleaner, less bulky fold. I use a bone folder to help get a nice crease, but just pinching them really well would have been fine. 
I do make sure before I crease them that the flap lines up straight with the rest of the strip so it doesn't end up all wonky. I repeat the scoring and folding process with the drawer inserts and the drawer dividers. For the drawer inserts, I score them at 3 eighths of an inch and 1 and 1 eighth inch. For the dividers, I score them at 3 eighths of an inch and 3 quarters of an inch. Next, I move on to gluing the drawers. I used my hot glue gun for this, but I feel like a regular liquid glue would have been a little bit easier because it would have given more time to make sure that everything was perfectly straight. After the outside of the drawers are all glued together, I fold and glue the drawer dividers before moving on to the inserts. I just slid them into the frame of the drawer and glued the two flaps to the sides, once again using hot glue. Tweezers are really handy for this step because it's easier to firmly pinch the flaps and the drawer together, and also hot glue is very hot. I do recommend using hot glue here if possible, just because it does dry so quickly, there's no real chance for the flaps to come undone while it's drying. If you don't have hot glue, you can always use a clothespin to pinch things together while it's drying. After those are finished, I go ahead and paint the inside and outside of the drawers and the dividers. To make the tiny little dividers easier to paint, I adhered them to some painter's tape. My favorite is frog tape, but really any type of low tack tape would work, or even a post-it note. While those dry, I move on to the frame. Before I glue everything together, I slice off a tiny bit of the ends of the side pieces, making sure to only slice off the paper and not into the cardboard itself. By wrapping them, it added a little length which would have messed up the measurements and therefore messing up the entire structure. It's always really important to double or triple check that everything fits together before you glue it so you can avoid having to tear everything apart. Next up is gluing everything together. I highly recommend using hot glue for something like this so you don't have to hold the pieces together while you wait for the liquid glue to dry. Hot glue dries really quickly, which is great for this sort of thing, but you also need to be very mindful of lining things up because you don't have a lot of time to move things around. That is definitely the downside to using hot glue, but as I said, using liquid glue also has its downsides. After things are glued together, I like to take the hot glue gun and without pressing Pressing the trigger, run it along the seams. This helps to melt and smooth out the glue. When gluing the frame together, I made sure that the sides that show the flaps are facing inward, and then when I add the shelves, I make sure that the side with the flaps are facing down so you don't see them. Once the frame is all put together, it's time for the drawer dividers. To do this without having to actually measure, I put the drawer in and then butt the divider up against it so I know that it's a perfect fit. Each row only needs two dividers because I am doing three drawers. To add the shelves, I butt them up against the drawer dividers so once again I don't have to think too much about measuring and getting it perfectly straight because the drawers and the dividers do the work for me. I could have done a third row of drawers but I wanted to keep a little space at the top because I thought it was a cute look. If I did want a third row of drawers, I would have to make the structure a little bit taller or make the drawers a little shorter so everything would be even. I do one less coat of paint to hide any glue, and I just think it's always a good idea to do two coats of paint in most scenarios. While that all dries, I move on to making the little handles for the drawers. For these, I just use a toothpick that I cut into quarter inch pieces. And after I cut those out, I took a nail file and sanded down the edges to even and smooth things out. I then used my little frog tape trick and paint them using gold nail polish. 
With the toothpicks being so tiny, I found that it was easiest to use tweezers and dip them in a tiny amount of clear tacky glue. I initially thought I might roll up little strips of paper, but to be honest, I was feeling pretty lazy at this point and the toothpicks were a much easier option. A small little bead would have worked also, but I really like how these turned out. When I had the idea to make this, I wasn't sure what I would really use it for or how I would decorate it, but I settled on a sort of botanical theme. Some of the dried flowers and greenery are real, mainly from springtime weeds and bouquets, and I even found the twigs outside. I did not make the bottle or the pink plant, but I did make the pot it's in and basically everything else. I think my two favorite things are the tiny bouquet and the little pencil. All right, there you have it. I love how this turned out. It is certainly not perfect, but I think it's really cute. And for the most part, it was made with things that would normally just get tossed out. If you have any requests for me, please leave them in the comments below. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. It really helps out my channel. And if you'd like to see more from me, please consider subscribing. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you next time.